Hi, my name is Ryan Copemans, and we're looking at work from the project The Wild Within, which is created by myself and my partner Alice Vexel. Um, we're here at IdeaWorks looking at this beautiful 10 by 8 foot digital canvas by Ventana um, as part of Digital Art Week in London in partnership with Black Dove. So the pieces we see here are uh, from this, this body of work, which takes real photographs of abandoned architectural interiors that we've researched and traveled to and photographed throughout the world and then implemented 3D digital foliage to, to create a, uh, a digital art series which attempts to, to revive these abandoned architectural spaces. And it's always amazing to see the pieces at such large scale because you know the, the creation process is often focused very much on the details and close up and you don't always get to to see the, the final pieces at this size. So it's, um, it looks phenomenal. And how, how does it feel that you, you've been working uh, so long on it and to see it this way? It's, the, it's, it's probably the most uh, enjoyable part of the whole process is the actual final presentation of the work. Um, and again, to see it on, on good quality displays is so, is so important, especially with this micro LED technology where from different angles, you can clearly see the visual. Where are we now? This is uh, the interior of a building in northwestern Italy that um, is this abandoned villa that's experienced all kinds of uh, forms of deterioration from arson to just, you know, the, the passage of time and the, the elements of weather um, slowly crumbling it. But and you bring life to, the, to those places? Yes, so the, the concept is to create this digital foliage, whether it's plants or, or flowers and trees, and uh, implement the, the, the natural elements into this you know, man-made structure and um, give these abandoned buildings sort of a, another, uh, another lease on life of sorts. A lot of the work originated in the, the digital art um, and tokenized our ecosystem of minting on the blockchain. So there's also that extra layer of the sort of visual preservation of the architectural environments um, through minting them on the, on the blockchain where they will be uh, stored and have their provenance recorded for ideally eternity. Uh, a lot of the, most of the buildings are located in former Soviet countries like Georgia or Ukraine or Russia. Where are we now? This is in Italy again, and um, this is a private residence, or it was built as a private residence. Here's in Armenia, um, in northeastern Armenia. And all the locations are chosen because of a, a sort of particular interest in the place, as well as them having a, you know, a dynamic and rich architectural history often with uh, real socio-political uh, nuances to their history. Yeah, and so, the, the- So the person who would have this art piece could, could just get immersed there and feel like they are part of the building? That's a good- And it could, the, the loop could be very long, or how does it work? Yeah, exactly. So one thing that's nice about seeing these pieces at this scale is that notion of, of feeling immersed into the rooms, which you, you know, you don't get when it's at, at a smaller size. So the pieces are infinitely looping in, in the sense that there's no, you know, start to start or finish to them. And the concept of that as well is to create this sort of suspended in time feeling because some of the buildings are, they, they, they appear to be 
uh, super old and, and deteriorated and abandoned, but in some cases are only you know, 100 years old or so. So there's this sort of playing with the notion of, of time and obviously the overgrowth of the plants alludes to the sense that time has passed, especially when you have large trees. But through this infinite looping, it's um, meant to, to sort of capture this like this moment in time that's that's uh, suspends the viewer in time. And I heard it was a 3660 by 2880. It's like more than 4K resolution. We, it's even kind of running on 8K in the back, right? Yeah, I don't actually know the total specifics of this display, but the works in general are are 4K or 8K. And um, this is at six, running at 60 frames per second as well. So you get that sort of slow motion, um, gentle movement in the pieces. And, and, and in the last few years, you've been doing stuff where people can buy them digitally? Yes, exactly. So this project, The Wild Within, was uh, born on the Ethereum blockchain, which has since also um, s some pieces exist on Bitcoin in the form of inscriptions on Bitcoin. But the, the work also is sometimes shown as physical prints, like large scale prints on archival paper, but uh, because there's movement and, you know, ideally the, the best form of presentation is on a digital canvas like this, where you have the large scale, the high resolution, the luminescence, and the movement. And, and I'm thinking some people might have uh, amazing home, home cinema set up, but they don't want to watch movies all the time, so they could switch it to art mode, right? Yeah. And have these on most of the time, maybe. Exactly. So one of the sort of characteristics of this work is that through the infinite loop, it can be, is meant to be sort of a, you know, a meditative and, um, you know, calming visual that can be displayed permanently or displayed all the time. Um, and in that sense, yes, the, the, the screen could have multi functions where the sort of, uh, the, the, the holding piece or what have you would be an artwork like this. Of course, typically people when they acquire the work will show that piece of work on a particular screen in a, in a sort of devoted to that hardware way. But that is one of the flexibilities of this digital medium is that you can switch it up for whatever use case you want. Where, where do you imagine the owners experiencing these? I can imagine it being a, uh, having a digital canvas like this in you know, a, a private residence would be the ideal scenario to show, to show one's work. But also, you know, if I've had collectors that are um, uh, hedge funds and organizations that have larger communal spaces like lobbies for instance where large displays like this um, are great great ways to show this kind of work but you know i think um, for most artists the idea of having your work in private collections from from uh, patrons who really appreciate the art and really enjoy the art for what for it itself that's the ideal scenario but um i think that there's you know quite a wide range of of uses and um different me different ways that the work can be shown for different audiences depending on what the the um, goal is would, would you like to talk to a little bit your your um, experience in the digital art and what you've been doing yeah, so th this project, The Wild Within, is a collection of 22 one-of-one one digital artworks. 
and the, they have been shown in different galleries or uh, public displays or different places around the world, as well as been auctioned in the traditional auction houses like Christie's and Sotheby's and whatnot. And the, the primary focus is to create works that we find interesting and we find appealing and um, enjoy the process of, of bringing them out into the world and having a, a sort of diverse range of different collectors who want to acquire the pieces and, and enjoy them. So, you know, it it's comes from a, a background of mine in documentary and photojournalism uh, combined with my partner Alice's background in, in coding and sort of more post-processing of images and then the two of our our interests and our our skill sets and experiences sort of merged together maybe 10 years ago to begin what has now become this project the wild within